Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the KOR universe. The Musings of the Knights of Ritzal continues its uh, special election coverage of the 2021 KOR election. And uh, this time around, we'll talk about the uh, election where uh, Jose Ritzal was actually involved in. And this was the election of 1891. We'll talk about that election and its significance to the 2021 KOR elections. So without further ado, we will start. In the 1800s, there was a uh, propaganda movement that uh, started in uh, Madrid. And these are composed of people who are intellectual, who are banished uh, by the uh, uh, Philippine uh, Spanish government. And uh, they uh, found themselves in uh, Madrid to continue uh, the cause of their banishment, which is basically uh, social justice and uh, uh, equality for the Filipinos. And in the propaganda movement, uh, which is the, uh, and the propaganda movement was the prime mover of this uh, gathering of Filipino thoughts and of intellects for uh, Philippine uh, betterment from Spanish uh, regime in, Man- in Manila. And this is uh, by prominent members, uh, Dr. Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar in uh, from uh, Bulacan and Marciano, Ma- Graciano Lopez Haina. Uh, these are the uh, stalwarts of the propaganda movement. The propaganda movement desires to have equality before the laws, before uh, the uh, Spaniards and the Filipinos. Uh, they wanted uh, the Philippines to be a province of the uh, of Spain. Uh, they want to have the restoration of the um, Spanish. Uh, Cortez representation of Filipinos that was halted. Uh, they, of course, they wanted the Filipinization of the uh, parishes in the Philippines and expulsions of the friars, and of course, human rights, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom to meet, and uh, petitioning for redress of grievances that they found in uh, Spain and not in the Philippines. Now, the propaganda movement was uh, not only uh, composed of these three, but also composed of intellectuals, both of uh, Filipino origin and those who are Philippine-loving foreigners, if you can call them that. Now, their organ is the uh, fortnightly La Solidaridad. La Solidaridad was was a privately owned publication, the first editor-in-chief was Graciano Lopez Haina to be uh, followed by uh, Marcelo H. Pilar in 1888. Also at that time, Marcelo H. Pilar became the sole proprietor of the Los Uh Marcelo H. Pilar is not new in uh, this endeavor because in uh, 1882, he founded another uh, Philippine organ for grievances against the Spanish uh, against the Spanish uh, mistreatment of Filipinos. In 1882, he founded Jarung uh, Tagalog. Uh, in 1882, also he uh, translated Aserizal's uh, um, writing uh, for publication in Jarung uh, uh, Tagalog. So, Marcel H. Del Pilar is not new to um, Dr. Jose Rizal. Now, in 1888, uh, there was an anti-friar manifesto that wanted the expulsion of the friars from the Philippines. This was uh, a manifesto of hundreds of Filipinos uh, led by Doroteo Cortes, a lawyer in Manila, and assisted by uh, Jose A. Ramos and Marcelo H. Del Pilar at this time. In 1888, Marcelo H. Del Pilar uh, did not only publish the uh, Jarong Tagalog, but is known for his fierce um, editorials and uh, satires uh, 
against the friars primarily and uh, excesses of the Spanish uh, government in in the Philippines. He was not also he was he was also a very prominent organizer. He was also an organizer in the Philippines. In fact, he was actually imprisoned in 1888 for questioning the uh, a friar who was overcharging uh, fees for his uh, baptism services, and he was uh, uh, imprisoned and he was said to have uh, been banished or escaped uh, in 1888 to um, the uh, uh, mother uh, country of Spain and of course at that time 1888 Rosario Sal was already in Spain uh, very established himself a very established uh, propagandist if you will he already wrote the Noli Me Tangere is widely known in uh, the, the circle and is uh, a very established leader of the propaganda movement himself now like I said the La Solidaridad uh, as an organ of the propaganda movement is basically uh, uh, using the pen to portray the deplorable conditions in the Philippines or working for reforms, uh, combating the backwardness of the system and reactionary uh, system in the Philippines and advocate liberal ideas and champion the legitimate aspirations of the Filipinos for democracy and happiness. Now, this is the uh, uh, Hispano-Filipino club made mostly of men, and this is the backdrop of the uh, uh, propaganda movement. As you can see, there are fine gentlemen who are either banished students uh, from the Philippines who are intellectuals, and of course, the leader is uh, Dr. Jose Rizal and Marcelo H. Del Pilar. Now, what happened that we had an election in 1891 between these two uh, legends in the propaganda movement back then and now are uh, very much revered uh, heroes in the Philippines? Well, let's go ahead and compare what happened in the propaganda movement and the uh, 2021 KOR the propaganda movement election of 1891. Now the objectives, what are the objectives of both of these elections? Well, in 1891, they wanted to patch up their differences. There was a lot of uh, uh, issues that differed between uh, sets of Filipinos uh, and they were not united. In the Knights of Rizal, they wanted to new, to elect a new set of officers being that this officers that we have right now uh, because of the pandemic had to extend uh, their tenure. Also, the 1891 propaganda movement uh, believed that maybe to patch up their differences, a responsable would unify them. A responsable would be a single authority that will direct the movement of the uh, and the objectives of the propaganda movement, if not the La Solidaridad. And the 2021 KOR election would renew the mandate. As you know, this uh, present disposition's mandate uh, ended and they were supposed to be um, elected for the Rizal in year eight, uh, 19, uh, 2018 and 2020, but because of the uh, pandemic, the Council of Elders approved, uh, because of the situation, the extension of the tenure of this uh, present disposition of uh, Supreme Council officers. So really, they have their mandate from the um, Council of Elders and not from, uh, due to, uh, from election. Now, the members of the propaganda movement, how did this uh, two elections affect them so far, thus far? In uh, the 1891 propaganda election, uh, the members were divided between the Risalista and Pilarista. Uh, these were two different uh, approaches. In fact, uh, writings of Jose Rizal at Order La Solidaridad sometimes uh, did not agree with the editorial policy of uh, Marcelo H. Del Pilar. Uh, 
in uh, the members in the 2021 KOR uh, easily uh, involved themselves in electioneering, uh, coming up with list of uh, nominees they want to be members of the Supreme Councils, to be elected as members of the Supreme Councils. And of course, as you know, the Election Tribunal Memo Number no. 8 put a stop to com- campaigning because of that. Also, the uh, 1891 propaganda election wanted to focus a perspective just because there's uh, uh, this unity. They wanted a single perspective and a renewed perspective to be able to carry out their objectives. The Knights of Rizal uh, electioneering is due for influencing the direction of the KOR in the uh, Rizalian year 2021-2023. The platforms in the uh, in both elections in 1891, the platforms was basically Rizal versus Del Pilar. Rizal uh, understood that uh, not only do we need uh, to have a, a higher moral uh, standard to gain the respect of the Spanish authorities, in um, the election of 2021, there's really no platform because it's really group thinking. As you know, the Knights of Rizal, we do not elect a single person, or we do we not, uh, or do we elect a single person for positions? We elect a member of uh, a group of leaders, and from then on, from there, they elect uh, the people in various positions in the group, including the Supreme Commander. In 1891, in the propaganda movement, they there there was a, a dichotomy of thought about the where the La Solidaridad or and also the propaganda movement uh, direction should be. So there was a the election wanted to be able to control uh, that direction and control the priorities of the organization, the propaganda movement. In the uh, 2021 KRR election, it is basically a compromise and prioritize just because of how the uh, structure of the leadership is uh, uh, maintained. Um, It is uh, no single platform really takes priority because uh, everybody got the mandate from the uh, voters. Now, what was the consequence of these elections? In 1891, instead of uh, providing unity for the propaganda movement, uh, the animosity and disunity was flaring. It did not unify, the election did not unify the propaganda movement. Now, in 2021, there's questions about the pandemic. It's a very fluid situation that uh, we don't know how much uh, movement, how much of the uh, uh, projects the Knights of Rizal uh, could uh, attain because of the pandemic. Uh, Also, in 1891, the propaganda move election, Rizal having won the... uh, two-thirds vote needed to be the responsable after the third uh, canvassing, abdicated his leadership. He did not want to see any more division in the ranks. Also, he retired from the propaganda movement after that and didn't really have anything to do with it after the uh, election in which he won and abdicated his leadership. On top of that, he stopped writing articles for the Lazar Daridad the KOR uh, 2021 election, there might be election challenges. Uh, election being new, uh, being a virtual election. Also, uh, because we are changing the leadership, there's going to be new direction and changes, particularly on um, the uh, uh, the effects of the pandemic um, and the emphasis of this new set of uh, Supreme Council members. Now, Rizal abdicated his uh, leadership in the propaganda movement. 
And what was the reason behind that? He did mention that he did not want to see a disunity in the organization, in the propaganda movement. But, um, and with his consequent uh, leaving, uh, Del Pilar, um, in 1891 uh, of August, a few months after the February uh, election, held election, uh, begged Rizal for forgiveness and wanted Rizal to come back. Rizal's response was, I quote, I am extremely surprised at your letter. I believe it is useless to talk about what does not exist. He is denying uh, that there was a rift, and if it was existed, it ought to have evaporated in the past. So he's saying, let's forget it. If it does exist, it is better to leave you alone to direct the policy of the uh, propaganda movement. And I and I do not me- meddle in it. I am like, however, he said, I am like an army corps who at the needed moment, you will see arrive. End of quote. And is this really uh, what uh, Rizal was uh, feeling? Uh, there is a contrary view because uh, when he had a brief letter to um, Blumentritt in the same year on December 31, 1891, he said he believed, and I quote, he be- I believe that uh, La Solidaridad is no longer our battlefield. Um, now it is a new struggle. The fight is no longer in Madrid. I'm going home to lead a new uh, the reform movement. So in- he believes that uh, uh, the uh, Lazar Dariad was passé and in his reading of the situation he thinks that uh, uh, the struggle is not in Madrid but in the Philippines. Now Del Pilar, what happened to Del Pilar after this election? Del Pilar according to Professor Bernie Carganilla of the University of the Philippines in Manila, he said that really Del Pilar outlived his significance, pushing for reform when the Katipunan was hot and heavy and was headed in a uh, different direction. Unfortunately, Del Pilar died in a public hospital in Barcelona alone in a pauper, alone because he had tuberculosis and a pauper, be- pauper because he gave most of his money to the cause. And in fact, he was wanting money and was asking family and friends to help in the struggle by supporting the La Solidaridad uh, publication. Now, when Dr. Jose Rizal was talking about uh, creating a new movement, he was talking about the La Liga Filipina. In the next year, 1892, in Elia Street, Tondo, Manila, he um, had uh, formed the La Liga Filipina, whose uh, objective are mo- uh, mostly um, uh, countrywide and not international. He wanted uh, La Liga Filipina to work for the Union of the Archipelago, uh, mutual protection in all cases of pressing necessity, uh, defense against violence and injustice, engagement in all education, agriculture and commerce, and study and application of reforms. Now compare that to the uh, propaganda movement, which is more international. He wanted, again, going back, he wanted equality of the Filipinos and Spaniards before the laws, uh, the Philippines to be a province of Spain, uh, restoration of the Philippine representation for the Spanish uh, Cortes, uh, expulsion of the priors and Filipinization of the parishes, human rights for Filipinos, uh, that was uh, encouraged and enjoyed in places like uh, Spain at that time. Now, the La Liga Filipina did not uh, prosper. After he was uh, banished in the Pitan, it split. And one of the precursor, the precursor of the, uh, the Katipunan was the La Liga Filipina, of which um, Bonifacio was a member. What are their aims? This uh, Katipunan was more on um, armed conflict. He wanted a strong alliance with each Katipunero, unite the Filipinos as one solid nation, uh, and establish a republic. 
through armed conflict against the Spanish regimes. Now, these are nice aims, just like the La Liga Filipina and the um, propaganda movement. But again, there was division in the Katipunan and there was another election. And that election was the, the Tenheros, Tejeros Convention in which the Magdalo and the Magdiwang uh, was split. And of course, we know that uh, uh, General Emilio Aguinaldo uh, was elected as president at the despair and uh, with violent reactions from Andres Bonifacio. And how did this all end? Well, Andres and Procopio Bonifacio um, in 1887, of the same year during that of the Tejeros Convention were tried on charges of treason by members of the War Council of Aguinaldo's government. On May 1897, brothers were executed. We don't know if this election, if it, it did not happen, would have uh, unified uh, the deep-rooted uh, issues about leadership in the Katipunan. Just like in the Knights of Rizal and the uh, propaganda movement, we know that the election is a way for us to unify. Um, it has been used at varying successes, but we know that um, the these elections, particularly the Tejeros Convention election and the propaganda movement election of 1891, resulted in further division. And it is hoped that uh, with the new election, the virtual election of the Knights of Rizal would not end up in the same way. So it is up to us, the Knights of Rizal, to make sure that uh, the election works in, for, our, for our purpose. So again, we found out that uh, elections are a tool that could go either way uh, with this election that we're having on uh, September 19, 2021, we hope that it will not be followed by um, the dire consequences of the elections that uh, the propaganda movement, the Tenejeros Convention election, and even the 1981 election of the Knights of Rizal ended up being with uh, Rizalism in our hearts we will prevail in this very difficult situation and we will celebrate the new set of uh, officers that will lead us in the coming uh, two years of the Knights of Rizal. With that, thank you so much and Anamnis Moria.